Okay, we'll take our Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 12. We'll continue our lesson that we started last week on the pitfall of bitterness. Bitterness. Read a couple of verses here. It says, um, begin in verse 14, chapter 12, verse 14. And follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Let's ask the Lord to bless our lesson. Father, we're grateful that we can be in church today. Thank you for the sunshine, the warm weather. and Thank you, Lord, that uh, folks made the effort to be in church today. We ask that you will use your word to instruct us, encourage us, uh, and caution us. Lord, this is an important topic, something that we face from time to time. People cross us or they do us wrong and we harbor the wrong kind of feelings toward them. And that bitterness eats away at us and it hurts others in the process. Help us, Lord, to learn to forgive. And I pray that you'll bless as we look into uh, this passage and try to get some uh, instruction from it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we began again last week. We'll just kind of give a quick review for those who might not have been here. If you have a handout, you can fill in a couple of the blanks as we go along. We looked at, uh, first of all, the characteristics of bitterness. Uh, bitterness is that sharp, biting taste that we get. Uh, it, the Bible calls it the gall of bitterness. Gall is poison. And spiritually, uh, bitterness is, is a poison to your soul, and it and will certainly affect you in many ways. Secondly, we looked at the, <coughs> the caution against bitterness. It says, looking diligently. The writer of Hebrews tells us that we should be on the lookout for bitterness, making sure that there's none in our hearts and lives, and if there is, that we identify it and we deal with it and take action against it. Uh, the scriptures also say, says that the heart knoweth his own bitterness. And so we, we know if we have ought against somebody else. And if we do, we have a responsibility to do something about it. And then thirdly, we looked at the cause of bitterness. And the Bible there says in ver verse number 15, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of of God, and we suggested the idea that uh, we have bitterness because we failed of the grace of God. If we had God's grace, God, God's grace enables us to do things we can't do on our own. If we had God's grace, we'd be able to handle this better. And of course, part of dealing with bitterness is forgiving other people, and we need to have God's grace to be able to, to forgive other people. We also noted that the reason we lack God's grace is because of pride. See, God resists the proud, but it gives grace to the humble. And so really, we could boil it down to the fact that if, when we have bitterness, yes, it's a lack of God's grace, but that's not his fault that we don't have it. It's our fault because we have pride in our heart, and our pride is what robs us of God's grace. And you, you can find... Uh, all sorts of things, you know, in, injustices done to you. You can build this case that this person said this, they did this, and they wronged me. And we have to learn to move past that. Otherwise, this thing called bitterness really grows in our heart and affects us. And you can be angry at something that your parents did to you or someone did to you, you know, when you were in second grade. Well, I remember they did this to me. Well, great. Move past it. Okay, and if we let our whole life be defined by some event or crisis or trial, 
Uh, you can't, and I've said this a number of times, you can't control what people do to you, but you can control how you respond to it. And we're responsible to respond in the right way and allowing uh, the pain, and there are painful experiences that we go through, but allowing those things to define how we're going to move forward is just crippling. We've got to just learn to forgive and move on. And we do that by having God's grace. And again, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. I don't want to fail. I don't, when I was in school, I didn't like to fail any classes, any quizzes, any tests. I don't want to fail God, and I don't want to fail in the grace of God, because failure is not really a good thing, is it? I like to, I like to do well. I like to be a success. When you, when, when you excel in something, you feel good about it, and you have good results, and I want to have God's grace. I want to be able to uh, do what he wants me to do. And so, that's the idea here that we're looking at, the, the cause of bitterness, it's, it's pride. And it is pride. You say, well, no, it's what, it's what someone did to me. No, it's our reaction to it. It's our pride that says, no, you shouldn't have done that. No, they shouldn't have done that. And there's that little something in all of us that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, you're angry at me, I'm going to be angry at you. And we've got to just deal with our pride and humble ourselves and come to the Lord, ask for grace to help, and he will help us. Let me move on now to the next point in our outline, number four, if you have it there. (coughs) It says, uh, the the point is this, the contempt of bitterness. And we see there the idea again, lest any um, root of bitterness springing up. So I noted earlier and mentioned even here in the review that um, bitterness is poison, the gall of bitterness, the poison of bitterness. And it stems, you know, this, this root of bitterness. Where does bitterness stem? I've kind of been hinting at it, but it, it stems from anger that we have towards someone else. And sometimes, by the way, that anger is at God. We get People get angry at God because God allowed something to happen to us, allowed a circumstances to come into our life, and God could have, or God should have, or God should not have, or whatever people uh, dream up, and they blame God, and they, they get angry at God. They're bitter at God. I've met people that way. You go out and start talking to people about the Lord and say, well, no, if, if there was a God, or God, how come God let this happen, and they're, they're responding to some hurt that they have in their hearts, and certainly getting angry at God's not the way to get help from God, okay? So we got to learn to get, get over it, amen, um, and, and learn to seek him. But there's this anger, and, and I use the word contempt here, and I want to give you a definition of the word from that old dictionary, Webster's 1828. I think it's quite enlightening on the word contempt. It says, the act of despising, right? And so I think that's perfect description. And I haven't, I'm not gonna, I'm going to finish it. I haven't finished it yet. But when you despise someone, you've got this bitterness in your heart and it causes you, it, 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 it's, you, you despise them. And that's why you've got this bitterness. It says the act of viewing or considering and treating as mean, vile, and worthless. When you're bitter at someone, you have contempt toward them, and you hear their name, and you hear, uh, or you see them, and you've got this attitude in your heart now that these people are vile, these people are worthless, these people are useless, they're a menace to society, they're, they're horrible, and, and you've got this anger inside. That's where the bitterness is coming from, and uh, another word to define it is disdain. Then It continues, it says, hatred of what is mean or deemed vile. So it's actually hatred. Bitterness really boils down to hatred. When you're bitter at somebody, you have hatred, you have contempt, you have hatred. And then um, Webster concludes his definition by saying this, this word, contempt, is one of the strongest expressions of a mean opinion which the language affords. So when you have contempt 
towards someone he's seen. That's one of the strongest words you could use. You just have contempt. And again, if you're harboring, if you have bitterness, it's because you, you're harboring hatred for someone or something. Um, and that's because we've been in, infected and affected by the gall of bitterness, and it leads to contempt. It's a terrible thing. And so you, if you can just say, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm bitter toward that person, and you can just dismiss it that, that easily. I hope as we look at this, you can, you can say, well, I shouldn't just dismiss it. That's, this is bad. It's bad to be bitter, okay? Now I want to move to the next one, number five on the outline, uh, the consternation of bitterness. You say, well, that's a big word. <coughs> uh, consternation is, uh, is, is a sudden dread uh, that comes upon you. It's like, ah, right? It's, um, it's a good word to describe what happens uh, when you're overwhelmed with bitterness. I mean, you could be just walking through life just fine until, right, till that name is, is brought up or until you see that person, whatever it is. And, and all of a sudden, boom, the root of bitterness springs up. It just whoo, comes up so quickly. Bitterness is, is uh, it, it seems to lie dormant in the heart. You know, uh, springtime is upon us. And a few weeks ago, you know, you could see uh, all of a sudden, these daffodils just springing up. Those bulbs have been in the ground. And the Lord in his creation knows when it's time for those things to spring up. And they've been there all winter long. We haven't seen them. It's not like the snow's been covering them. We haven't had much of that, right? But they've just been sitting there. And then all of a sudden, they're springing up. And then... Boom, they, they come up quickly. And tulips are the same way. And they, they just seem to lie dormant. And then all of a sudden, boom, they come up. And that's what happens with bitterness. It's that root is just there. It's there. You can be doing fine until. And then it just pops up. And that's why I, I use that word consternation. It's, it's um, it, 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 something triggers it. And it, it immediately springs up, and in our reaction to it's not good, right? What comes out of our heart is not nice. It could be gossip. It could be uh, an insult towards someone. It could be revenge. Well, I'm going to do this. And all these, th these feelings of anger and hatred and contempt are coming up. And they just come up again and again and again. That's why we need to deal with the root, you know? If you go and dig out those bulbs, then the daffodils aren't gonna come up again, right? And we gotta dig deep and try to work at getting these, uh, these roots out. And when it does spring up, the Bible says it's gonna trouble us. And so we need to learn how to deal with it when it does spring up. We don't take actions that our heart are telling us to take because they're not good actions. We need to confess, confess this to the Lord and, and ask for forgiveness and ask for grace to help us to deal with these things. Uh, David, <coughs> in Psalm 63, verse 4, said, um, he said this about the workers of iniquity. He says that they, they wet their tongue like a sword, right? So they're sharpening up their, their tongue, just like a, uh, a soldier would sharpen up his, his sword to go into battle. He said, peop, these wicked people, they, they sharpen up their tongue. And it says, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. And then it says what these arrows are, even bitter words. So he said that's what the heart of the wicked does. The wicked shoot arrows and those arrows are bitter words. He said, well, I'm not wicked. I'm a saved person. 
but do we launch out some bitter words at times? And if so, those arrows are, are harmful and they come from a heart that is not good. And, and our heart's true condition is seen when that bitterness comes out. Well, we can put on a, a good show, we can act spiritual, we can act pious, we can act holy, and we can harbor this bitterness and these hard feelings and this hatred and this contempt toward people. He said, well, it's just natural. It is natural, but God's people are supposed to be supernatural and get God's help to deal with their sin and to move on. And um, a family uh, or, uh, you know, a family member or a friend uh, sometimes will even try to warn us, won't they? Say, you know, you, you've got, you got to be careful of bitterness. Oh, I, I, I know, yeah, I, I, yeah. And, and sometimes we either justify it, but they did this or we excuse it and like we've got a good enough excuse uh, why we should um, be able to be bitter. And too often, uh, bitter people also say, oh, no, I, I, I'm not bitter. And all the, their tone and their words and their actions <laughs> reveal that they are. And, of course, the Bible says the, the heart is deceitful. And, and even though the heart knows its own bitterness, the heart will tell itself, no, you're not bitter. you 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 got this under control. It's all good. And it's not all good, right? And that's our pride coming up again. Oh, I, I, I don't have a problem with bitterness. I just can't stand that person. <laughs> uh, well, maybe you do have a problem with bitterness, right? Uh, and so that pride continues to cut off the lifeline of grace that God wants to give us to enable us to move forward and, and to go on in life. Let me look at uh, number six here companions of bitterness. We'll turn a couple other passages as we go along here, and, and I want to pause and, and see a few other uh, portions of Scripture to help us see some things that accompany bitterness. Bitterness doesn't usually just travel alone, all right? We can go to James chapter number three. It's the next book over from Hebrews, James chapter number three. There's two mentioned in this verse, verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, uh, glory not and lie not against the truth. So I think you could see there that the two that are mentioned here are envy and strife. He says if you have bitter envying... So it's not just envy, it's bitter envying, as he's trying to use this to describe people, uh, or, or the, the envying, and strife. So those two go along. When we have bitterness, it's not surprising that there's also strife. Now, you can do a whole study on strife and look up uh, verses of strife, and you'll see that, that uh, strife is caused from being carnal and walking in the flesh. So really being bitter is, is, is not being spirit-filled or spirit-led. It's being controlled by this uh, corrupted flesh. And so there's gonna, where you have bitterness, you're going to have strife. And God doesn't want us to have strife. Strife's the opposite of peace. But some people say, well, I, I want to have peace in my heart, but they don't act like they want to have peace in their heart. They just do all sorts of things to create strife. Now we can go back to Romans uh, chapter number three. Here's another one. Romans chapter three, another companion of bitterness. In verse number 14, We'll, we'll start actually in verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. All right, so this isn't obviously good. People using deceitful words, poisonous words. Um, then it says, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Cursing and bitterness. 
Okay, so you've got someone who's got a mouth that's full of cursing. You know what else they've got? A heart full of what? Bitterness. You know, you ever hear someone say, well, I don't typically curse. I only curse when I get really mad. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't get really mad. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be cursing at all. And that cursing comes out <coughs> because there's a heart of bitterness. And so it tends to go together. And it doesn't mean that just because you have bitterness that you're going to curse, but you're more likely to. And then we can look at another portion of Scripture, Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4, and verse number 31. Familiar passage says, Let all bitterness and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So a couple of other ones that are mentioned here. So he says, let all bitterness, and then a few things follow. And here, if you, for your outline's sake, you can just put down two, anger and slander. All right, so that's what comes out. So let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, that idea of evil speaking is involving slander, be put away from you. And so those all tend to accompany one another. When you're bitter, you have anger. We already touched on that. And you're probably going to slander. You're going to have some evil speaking. Say some things about people that aren't nice. So, well, they deserve it. And I'm just warning everybody of how bad these people are, right? Oh, God says to put away that evil speaking. So those are some companions, not the only ones, but when you do have bitterness, other things are going to be there. So do you, do you want to live this life of anger and, and gossip and slander and strife and and, and, and having the wrong things come out of your heart and out of your mouth. If so, just hang on to that bitterness. It makes you feel really good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And it doesn't make other people feel really good either. Now, we've got um, just a couple of minutes, so I figure we'll start point number seven, and hopefully we'll have time to finish that and our last point number eight next week. So number seven. In the outline, we'll see the consequences of bitterness and hopefully we'll get through the first one. The first one would be trouble within and then the next one will be trouble without, you know, but we'll talk about, Lord willing here, just the trouble within. It says, lest any root, verse 15, of bitterness springing up trouble you. What are the consequences? You know, the first victim of bitterness is not the person that you're bitter against. The first victim is you. And by choosing to be bitter, we hurt ourselves. That's, we, we are the first victim. And bitterness is really, it causes self-inflicted injuries. If you fail to deal with it, it says, again, it will trouble you. And we can convince ourselves that, that bitterness uh, is gonna, oh, I'm, I'm, it's gonna bring pain to others. First and foremost, it injures us. And we've got to remember, as I mentioned before, in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And so our corrupt heart's going to lie to us. It's going to tell us that, that it's okay to be bitter. It's going to convince us that we get some satisfaction out of being angry at this person and having these bad feelings toward them. Uh, but what kind of satisfaction is that, right? When we, when we walk around all grumpy and irritated and, and full of contempt and disdain and strife. Uh, <laughs> that's not satisfaction. Um, that angry disposition doesn't make anybody happy, right? And bitterness can lead to more sin. And so I want you to see there, where if you're back there in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, I want you to see what happened. He gives us an example in verse 15, he tells us, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. He says, and, and thereby many be defiled. We'll consider that part later. But 
he said there in verse 16, lest there be any fornicator. Okay, so if you let this thing of bitterness spring up and trouble you, he says, lest more bad things result. He said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So God here, even in this passage, uses uh, an example of someone who was bitter and how it, it uh, caused more problems for himself. He uses Esau. Esau got bitter at Jacob. Jacob did some things that he shouldn't have done. And, his, and, and Esau's own mother conspired against him. So his mother and his brother are being a little underhanded, not a little bit. And so he was, he was dealt a bad hand, so to speak. He was angry. He was upset. And what happened was, the uh, Bible says that he became a fornicator. How'd that happen? He let bitterness get a hold of his heart, and now he's, 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 he's ruled by his flesh. And when you're ruled by your flesh, you can commit all sorts of other fleshly sins. It wasn't by accident. God puts this in the Bible as a warning. He said, listen, if you get bitter, you could become like Esau, who became a fornicator. You say, well, I'm not planning to go into fornication. I'm just mad at somebody. I just have a little bit of bitterness, and, and they did something wrong to me. No, but you don't understand how far down the road sin will take us. We get in the flesh, and, 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 and we're angry, or we're upset, and now all these other sins of the flesh, we're, we're capable of committing. That's why we need to deal with things and, and not hold on to grudges. And, 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 and it will trouble us, it'll ruin us, it'll defile us, it'll hurt our lives. That's what it did to Esau. And God put it in the scripture because he doesn't want us to follow that, that, that line of reasoning also. And not only that, he not only became a... a, a a fornicator, but he devised a plan to kill his brother. He plotted to murder his brother. Well, he didn't carry it out. No, he didn't. But he had, he had had those feelings and he made those plans. And when we uh, entertain those thoughts in our heart, we're, we're guilty of it in our heart already. The Bible teaches that. And he even eventually ended up marrying two women that he knew his parents wouldn't approve of, just to spite. So he's, he's hurting and damaging his, uh, his own relationship with his family because I was done wrong, I'm going to do everybody else wrong. Mm. Bitterness can lead to a, a, a terrible life of sin. You know, Esau's life didn't have to end the way it did. Didn't, he didn't have to go and, and become such a, a horrible, carnal, sinful man. But he chose to because he didn't deal with the sin of bitterness. So, if we, the, one of the consequences of being bitter is that it will trouble us and we're going to have problems in our own heart, in our own life, and it's just better to deal with it. Next week, we'll look at the next part. Father, we thank you for your word. Ask, Lord, that you protect us. Perhaps there's someone in here that's been holding on to a grudge and they've got contempt for somebody. That, those strong feelings of of hatred and anger and bitterness because someone did them wrong. And Lord, I pray that they would ask you for grace to forgive them and to confess their sin of hatred and anger and bitterness so that they don't end up like Esau, living a carnal life of just indulging in whatever we feel like to make ourselves feel good and it doesn't make us feel good in the end. Help us, Lord, to deal with the sin, and by your grace, have victory. Help us to see how dangerous it is, and not just to dismiss it, or to justify it, or excuse it. We're grateful, Lord, for your, your wonderful love, 
and the clarity of Scripture. May we have a good day. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right.